We're here at the Museum of Comic and Cartoon Art at 594 Broadway, just below Houston, for the opening reception of their newest exhibit, Kim Deitch, A Retrospective. It runs through December 5th. We're here talking with the curator of the Kim Deitch exhibit. Bill, uh, this show was your idea. How did that come about? Uh, well, I got involved with MOCA's curatorial committee this summer, uh, and I proposed this show uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, Kim is one of my favorite artists. Um, there was a need for a show, and uh, I had previously worked with Kim doing a presentation at a symposium here in the city, so I knew that we worked well together. And I thought he was someone who would benefit from a show like this, and I also thought that MOCA would benefit from having a show with someone like Kim. We had the uh, Kim Deitch uh, retrospective, the opening reception, with Kim Deitch himself. So Kim, we're gonna start here and kind of work our way through your career real, real quick. This is the earliest stuff? Well, this is the earliest one. This is like from my very first uh, comic strip that ran in the East Village Other. This piece is from 1967, so like that's 41 years ago. And uh, yeah, this is a strip called Sunshine Girl, which was basically kind of a psychedelic flower child. Although it's actually interesting, it's run full circle because my latest book, has a story called the Sunshine Girl, where she's more of a prop than a character. And that's Picturama. It's all—it's a bottle cap thing, right? That's right. Yeah, she's on a bottle cap, you know. And uh, you know, she never was much of a character, but she's got a nice look, you know. So uh, she makes a better prop than a character. So and you were doing underground newspapers in New York, right? The East Village Other, yeah. on the Lower East Side, yes. And that's what most of the stuff on this first wall is, right? Pretty much. This is from the Gothic Blimp, which was an ma uh, underground tabloid magazine that I edited for a while. But this is East Village Other. This is East Village Other. Th this is a collaboration with my brother Simon. There's the two of us there. Because the whole family does art. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I think we we kind of have to mention your your dad was the influence for all that. That's true. That's true. You know. Yeah. I had a great childhood. You know all kinds of really interesting cultural things and since my father was actually moonlighting when he wasn't making cartoons doing uh, a comic strip that's really where it all started for me you know watching him do comics and picking it up you know because when you're doing comics a lot of times you need to be by yourself but then there's a lot of other times where you're only too happy to have some company and it's weird it kind of brought us closer together and um, you know somehow you know, I ended up doing it, you know. Uh, all the brothers did in some sense, right? Well, my brother Seth writes fiction, doesn't draw, but of course in my latest book, Deitch's Pictorama, I illustrated uh, one of his stories, and then I put him together with my brother Simon for a, one story where he wrote it, and my brother Simon illustrated it. Illustrated uh, picto fiction. Well, yeah, you know, that's what... That's what Is that what you call uh, it? I, I did. Yeah, I got it from EC. When e C, they landed on EC, you know, they tried to come back with something a little more overtly respectable, and they called it picto fiction, you know. So, you know, I don't know. It looks oh, good on the cover, you know. I think it's great. On the intro, I, I, I explain what it is. It's heavily illustrated fiction. That's what it is, yeah. you know. But actually, it's more than that because... You know, as I worked on that book, I just picked around, it's kind of interesting. Uh, little by little, aspects of comics started coming back. Like, you know, comic word balloons began to reinsinuate themselves. A lot of comic splash panels. And I think what I'm trying to do is to come up with kind of an interesting hybrid medium that can kind of have the best of, you know, text fiction and comics. Because, let's face it, there just are some times when... Uh, you know, traditional writing can get certain subjective ideas over better than the comics format can. You know. Everybody's really doing this now. This is a this yeah. kind of a new wave is mixing the prose with the with the comics. It's in the air. It's yeah. definitely in the air. And I'm definitely eager to get my two cents in. You know. <laughs> well, you've put your two cents in in every major uh, event uh, in the comics industry over the last 
I don't know, 45 years. Well, no, 41, yeah. Oh, well, 41. Uh, well, but you were there sitting at the sitting at the foot of your father uh, when he was doing Tom Terrific yeah, and actually, Terrible Thompson. That, that movie over there is 48 years old. Well, yeah, so, so maybe you're right. Yeah, yeah, when I was in high school, you know. <laughs> is this where Waldo first shows up? More or less. He'd been around for... He actually, I, I was using him even before I got published a little bit, just because, you know, I couldn't draw that well, and I thought, figured I could finesse a cartoon cat better than I could uh, human figures. You know. Rubber hoses is, is fairly Yeah, easy. Yeah, I mean, that's why they use so many black cats in old cartoons, so yeah, they're easy yeah. to draw. That's where it started, anyway. This is my early Waldo magnum opus. This is actually a serial that ran in Gothic Blimpworks. Since I was editing it, I was in a position to give myself all the color, and did. <laughs> and so, and as many pages as you wanted, right? Yeah, I, as many as I could do, you know. Yeah. How, often, how often was each, each fill each other a weekly? Each fill each other ultimately was a weekly, yes. And uh, Gothic Blimp Works, oh, I guess we did seven issues. They came out, I don't know, it was supposed to be monthly. Maybe it wasn't exactly monthly, you know. <laughs> See, we were definitely behind the times and not going comic book, you know, uh, this tabloid format. You know, basically, we were kind of pissing against the wind with it. But, you know, you know it's, they make kind of nice looking pages, but they're hard to keep, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, and these are rare as hen's teeth now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I only have one complete set of the Gothic blimps myself. Wow. Really, so. And then... Is this? You, did you move to San Francisco at some point yeah, in time yeah. and join everybody else? That's you, it. you and Spain were on the East Coast. We were on the East Coast working at the East Village other. But you know, everybody knew that. You know, the cart comics book Valhalla was San Francisco. You know, everybody and really, just about everybody I knew in New York. But you know, I left in '69. By a year later, everybody I knew who was in any way serious about it had moved to San Francisco. We were looking for that comic book, El Dorado, and we found it. I mean, that was the amazing part. Yeah. How long did this last now? Well, you know, this is my first comic book, you know. Okay. You know, I'd, I'd been in other comics. Like this, by, by here, we're in like 1972. And actually, I drew this comic in Portland, Oregon. I, I took a little vacation from San Francisco because I couldn't get any work done. <laughs> There's a party in town. You know? <laughs> Too many distractions. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But uh, these are pages from the second issue, uh -huh. Horn Fed 2. There's, there's, it's, there's that cover. Okay. Well, that's my color guide for the cover. And were you doing this, uh, w w was this all your work in the comic? That's what these were my first solo books with, right. with all me. All you. you know, when I first got to San Francisco, I was doing uh, stuff for everybody's comics. Right. You know, so it took a while before I yeah. got myself together to do one all by myself. At first, it didn't really seem to matter to me. You know, uh, it was getting to know everybody and everything. You know, yeah. it was the way to go at first. But you know, at a certain point, you know, it seemed like you know, a rite of passage was to do your own comic book. And so those are my first two. One of the themes that reoccurs over and over in your work is the melding of reality and fantasy to create a world that is that where the reader does not know from word, panel to panel, sometimes word to word, which is actually real and which you've created, and then and that creates its own uh, sort of mythology. Well, you know, that's what fiction's all about, you know. You want it to have the ring of truth, and so you got to put a certain amount of truth in there, you know, to sort of guide people along to, uh, you know, take, step off of reality and uh, take that trip with you. So that's what's going on, you know, and that's still what's going on. You know, uh, I'm doing a lot of things like that that are like, memoirs they're written they're me talking about something it's you know it's not real it's not true it's fiction you know it's, it's a thin line between writing fiction and being a pathological liar you know